you're watching UATV News, my name is Ina Kosinska. Good evening. A call center to counter the spread of COVID-19 has appeared in Ukraine. 150 operators will answer questions about the disease, tests and treatments 24-7. Calls are free, said Minister of Health Maxim Stepanov. The daily growth rate of cases after the weekend has slightly decreased – 6,754. The leaders in the number of new cases are Kharkiv, Lviv and Chernivtsi regions, as well as Kyiv. Most of Ukraine is in the orange quarantine zone since Monday. Well, for example, you call from a small town in the Khmelnytsky region and you are concerned that you can't call your family doctor or you can't get a referral. It is clear that in order to provide you with a comprehensive answer, the operator will need to contact the appropriate city, the appropriate family doctor, and then provide you with this information. Europe is imposing severe restrictions due to COVID-19. Great Britain has become the ninth country in the world with more than a million confirmed cases. Partial lockdowns have already been introduced in Greece, Belgium and France. Starting from Monday, this list is expanding. Our correspondents will tell more. Germany has again imposed tough restrictions due to the spread of the coronavirus. Restaurants, bars, cinemas have ceased their work. Groups of more than 10 people cannot gather in public places. This is so the number of patients has risen over the past few days. In the past week, we have had twice, even three times more patients than before. We still have a capacity to provide good care, but we are seeing a fall in care supply. Our staff is slowly reaching their limit, but patients are still being treated correctly. Austria resumes quarantine starting from November 3rd. A curfew is imposed for almost a month. Catering establishments will only work for takeaway. Zoos, theatres and museums will close. It is necessary to impose restrictions between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. as stipulated by law. That does not mean that you cannot leave your own household. It is of course possible to go to work to help others or to go for a walk to stretch your legs. What these restrictions mean? is that there is a de facto ban between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. This means you can no longer leave your own household to meet or visit other people. Unfortunately, this is necessary because we have seen that there are often meetings and parties in the private sphere in the evening, and that has resulted in a lot of contagion. Israel, meanwhile, has begun the first phase of clinical trials of a coronavirus vaccine. In case testing on volunteers is successful, the drug will be released next summer. We are starting series of investigation on the safety and efficacy of the uh, vaccine, hoping that soon enough we will be in the market okay, to stop okay, the nightmare of the pandemic in Israel. Nationwide testing for COVID-19 is being carried out in Slovakia. The population is given free rapid antibody tests in case of refusal to take a test or a positive result. One must self-isolate for 10 days. According to the results, over the weekend, about 1% of those who passed the tests turned out to be sick. Reported by Nick Starkov for UATV News. Today is the last day before the U.S. election, when incumbent President Donald Trump and Democratic candidate Joe Biden had the last chance to influence voters in critical states. More than 93 million Americans have already voted by mail, but ahead the fight for the 270 votes of the Electoral College, which are necessary for the final victory. Our correspondent in the USA, Alexei Matsuka, will tell you more. In the last days before the voting day, candidate Joe Biden holds a rally in Philadelphia. And it is not a coincidence, because Pennsylvania is his native state, with Philadelphia its most populated city. However, rallies here are held in accordance with a new scheme due to a coronavirus disease. Crowds are not allowed here, and those who come fill up the registration in advance and arrive with their own cars. Quite few journalists are here either, but we managed to see how everything is organized from the inside. Vice President Biden is going to speak to, uh, to his base and uh, get us pumped up and get us over the home so we can be victorious on November 3rd. I'm here because I believe in Joe Biden and restoring decency to the White House. I'm here because of climate change. I'm here because the pandemic made me lose my job and we need someone to... Um, uh, to put in a plan. We need a plan to combat coronavirus. Here now candidate Joe Biden is arriving to meet his supporters. He's going to meet people that are waiting for him in the park, sitting in their vehicles. But this is a president who won't even stand up to Vladimir Putin for putting bounties on the head of American soldiers serving Afghanistan. He's too scared to challenge it. He's Putin's puppy. 
SOEs. Donald Trump's not strong. This makes me angry. Donald Trump's not strong. He's weak. While Biden spoke to his supporters, a group of supporters of Donald Trump came to the park. However, they were not allowed in by the Secret Service guarding the event held by Democrats. So the streets is closed right now. That's all. Biden Obama said? I, I can't speak for Biden. I'm just saying. I'm with the Secret Service and not with staff. В самой Филадельфии вот уже несколько дней как объявлен комендантский час. Philadelphia itself imposed a curfew several days ago. The National Guard deployed in the city. This happened due to protests that had erupted in the city last Monday after the murder of Walter Wallace. Tomorrow the election race ends and Americans finally to decide whom to entrust their country for the next four years, Biden or Trump. Reported by Alexey Matsuka, Nick Starkov for UATV News. In Moldova, the incumbent head of state Igor Dodon and ex-Prime Minister Maya Sandu are entering the second round of presidential election. According to the results of the first round, Sandu is in the lead. She got more than 36% of the vote, Dodon 32.6%. At the same time, at foreign polling stations, more than 70% of voters voted for Sandu and less than 4 for Dodon. The second round is scheduled for November 15th. Nine parties are entering the Georgian parliament. The election took place on Saturday, October 31st, and the Central Election Commission has counted all votes. The ruling Georgian Dream Party will have the most mandates. This is the third time it is, has won the parliamentary elections. In the meantime, protests of the opposition, which doesn't agree with the results, do not subside. People set up a tent city in front of the parliament. They demand a second vote, claiming fraud and pressure on voters. Digital Housing Office is abbreviated from Ukrainian as Jack. In Ukraine, a service was launched to solve housing and communal issues online. With the help of a mobile application, one can not only call a plumber, pay for services, but also hold meetings of residents of apartment buildings. More details up next. I can order the services of a home master or the services of cleaning companies from a mobile application. And most importantly, I can understand the cost of this service in advance. Vitaly Skilsky is one of the developers of the home management service. Jack is a unique project that has no analogs in Ukraine. You will be able to receive absolutely all services thanks to one phone, which is why we call the platform Home Control Panel, because in terms of its functionality it is very broad and at the same time it easily controlled from a smartphone. In fact, Jack is a digitalization of housing and communal services in Ukraine, Vitaly says. A communication platform through which apartment building residents can communicate with management companies, service providers, neighbors and effectively solve problems online. People understand that during the pandemic they do not have the opportunity to hold a meeting. There is no way to go directly to the head of the enterprise because receptions are limited. People do not have an opportunity to come because many work. That is, they now understand that it is very convenient to communicate using a smartphone with Jack. More than 3,000 people from hundreds of Ukrainian cities have already connected to the platform. Only service providers will pay for using the application. One of the most important values is that a resident can give feedback on the quality of this service, and the next residents will already be able to get information in advance about how good the provider is. Now the service is in open beta testing, and reviews are still being accepted to improve the jack. Reported by Nick Starkov for UATV News. Falcons, hawks, owls and eagles are in the courtyard of a private house. All the birds were once rescued by a resident of Dnipro, Volodymyr. Some of them were victims of improper maintenance, others were shot by hunters or hit by a car. Our team find out more on how to take care of the birds of prey. The house of Volodymyr Zavizion stands out immediately visible. Two predators, great sea eagles, are welcoming guests behind the fence. While they used to be afraid of strangers, they immediately go into men's arms. Don't be afraid, we've come here to film you, everything will be fine. 
Vladimir talks to a young female eagle tenderly. The wingspan of the bird is up to two meters. Although it is a predator, she bears a friendly nature. The eagle lives right in the yard. It's strictly forbidden to keep such birds in cages. Its plumage suffers firsthand. The male eagle is over two years old. He got to Vladimir as a nestling. People found him forbidden in the forest. They did not see any nest nearby and took him away. While people themselves refused to nurse an eagle, they brought it to the man. He is friendly when you feed him, but if you would try to hug him, this never works, he immediately starts biting. Vladimir has been interested in the habits of the birds of prey since his childhood. He has created a care center for them in the yard. Throughout the year he has nursed and released more than a hundred birds, which people has passed on to him. So special, it's very agreeable, belongs to a long-legged buzzard species. Vladimir keeps carrying only those birds that are not able to survive in the wild. He says eagles are accustomed to people and easy prey. When released, they can die shortly. If you release such a bird, if it fails to hunt, he will fly to the private sector. Imagine you live in a private sector and your morning begins with a scream. Chickens, geese flying around the yard and such a monster is gutting your pets. Thirteen predators are sheltering in Voldemort's house. Each day of the upkeep counts for up to $50. But the man shows no sign of letting up. Reported by Nick Starkov for UATV News. That's all for this hour. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook pages. Stay safe and good night.